Now to get to the code view from the design view, you can double click on the form itself or you can go between the tabs. Now if you don't have that tab in here, you can just double click in that and it will automatically go to the code view. You can always click on the files on your solution explorer in here and get it get to the designer and the code view that way. So that's up to you. Now I'm going to I'm usually going to double click so I get to the code view. And let's go ahead and take a look at the default settings for our code in here. And as we can see, it imported the main namespaces for the form. So these will keep the form alive. So it, it, it imported uh, the system namespaces inside that. It went deeper and it imported the rest of the namespaces. So whenever we use the attributes of the, I'm sorry, not the attributes, the functions and the properties, of the of the classes inside these namespaces, then they already uh, we already imported them in here, so they are ready to be used. Okay, and here is our default namespace. So it named it just like the file name, simple guessing game underscore version one. And within that na that namespace, it has a default class. So the name of the class is guessing game. Okay, so here it is, just public partial class guessing game, and uh, the constructor for the class. So remember the constructor has the same name. There's a function with the same name as the class that is the constructor. So here it is and that constructor is just calling one uh, one function it's called initialize component. Okay so there's another function it's called guessing game load. So we have two functions in there and here's what goes on when the guessing game loads. There's a constructor that triggers and initializes the component. So now our first step in here before we actually build our custom class, so we're going to build a custom class within the same namespace, uh, I want to set up a few variables in here, a few properties within this namespace uh, and within this class. So I'm going to hit enter a couple of times and push down the constructor and within the guessing game class, this is a default class again. I'm going to go ahead and set up some private variables and I'll talk about the private variables in a second. Let's go to set them up first. So start typing private and then these are full integers. So I'm going to say let's uh, set up a variable for the number generated. So this val variable will hold a full number and that is the generated number uh, that the computer is going to pick. Now when I say private, uh, only the functions of this class since it's outside so it's not in the constructor or any other function it's within the class the root of this class then every function in this class could see this integer or this variable okay if I were to create this as uh, if I were to create this outside or on a different class then I would make that public in order to reach to this class so if I make it private again just keep in mind that only the functions within this class can reach into this variable and if I do that pro, uh, public which we're gonna do public properties or variables on our custom class and you'll see how we get to that so again private int num generated and here's another private int let's say this is the total tries so this variable will hold the total tries and then I'm gonna have another variable that will hold the number of tries so num try Okay, so numtry is the numerator and the denominator is the total tries, one out of three. Okay, now we can switch that and say uh, one out of five to uh, one out of six. So then the number of tries can add up all the way to whatever you set up the total tries to be. Okay, that's the reason we are holding these into two different variables. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, give the initial values for these two variables, the total tries and the number of tries. And then we're going to go ahead and generate the random number on our custom class. And uh, you'll see how we use that variable in a second. So I'm going to come here and say that the total tries. So you can simply copy that. And say total tries is equal to 3. And the number of try tries is 1. So it starts at 1 and it's going all the way to 3 okay so if you were to give them 5 tries I can simply say 5 okay here it is alright 
So next, let's go ahead and uh, build our custom class. So that's going to go outside this class. Here's where this class starts, and it closes right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter outside, and I'm going to say public class and the name of the class. And the name, let's name it calculate. Now you can give whatever name to the class. So again, the name of the class is calculate. And this class lives within the same namespace as the other one, which is simple guessing game v1. So you can have more than one class again into a namespace, because a namespace is a collection of classes like we talked earlier. So here it is, public class calculate. And let's go ahead and set up a constructor, which we're going to leave it alone for now. Public calculate. So here's the constructor. I'm just going to get put some comments in there saying constructor. Okay, so two forward slash here, they will comment that line. And let's set up our first uh, public method or our first public function. So again, function and method, they refer to the same thing. So when I say method, I'm talking about a function inside a class. So here's my public method. INT, this is, uh, this is going to return a full integer. So I'm going to say, let's name this generate random since this function will will return a generated number okay and then we can go ahead and give it a range uh, so let's start let's say I want to return this variable that's called reply okay so I'm declaring a variable with the name reply and I'm gonna say uh, in order to generate the number there is a built-in method within the random class again the random class is a built-in class so I'm going to call the random class and instantiate an object out of that class. So let's name that object RND for random. And here's new random. So what I just did is I uh, created an object out of the random class. Okay. And I'm going to say reply is equal to RND dot inside this class. I will give me the methods of this class and the attribute I mean the method and properties this class has we want to use the next method okay next and I'm gonna say 10 what this does this generates a number a random number between 0 and 9 okay so again this generates a random number between 0 and 9 however we want a number between 1 and 10 so if I simply add one in front of this then the lowest number it will generate is 0 plus 1 is 1 right and the highest number will generate is 10 so 9 plus 1 is 10 so here I can switch that that this will generate now a number between 1 and 10 okay and then after it generates the number I can simply return the reply okay so again this function is with data type int so when I return I'm going to return a full integer, which is again an INT. So INT stands for integer. Okay. And that's that function. We already set that up. We are not using that yet. Okay. Without calling that function and uh, using it, pretty much nothing, nothing will happen. So right now we just set that function up. And let's keep going within the same class. Let's go and set up another function. And then you will see how we use them in a second. So public let's do this function will return a string and I'm gonna return validate guess so in this function I am going to return the message please guess higher please guess lower uh, and good job pretty much so let's say this function will receive two parameters we're gonna pass two values to this function and the first one will hold a full integer and I'll say user this is gonna hold the user's input so you will see how we pass those values to this function in a second. So just keep in mind for now that the first parameter will hold the full integer. The second one will hold the random number. There you go. Okay. And this will return, again, a string. So I'm going to say string reply. I'm going to create a variable with a data type string. And I'm going to say reply starts at nothing. So this will... Uh, start the string being blank we want to start it somewhere and then I will pass or concatenate uh, 
a string depending on the conditions that I give. So I'm going to say the first condition is if the user gets the number lower than the number generated, then I'm going to prompt the message, which is a string that I'm going to pass to the variable reply that says, please guess higher. So here's how you do that. I'm going to say if, the if condition, user, and user is this variable in here. It's less than rand. And within the body of the condition, I'm going to say reply is equal. Please guess higher. There it is. So reply is equal to that string. All right. And let's keep going with the conditions. Now, if the user guesses a lower number or a, a bigger number, if user is greater than rand, so the user guessed a higher number than the generated number, then I'm going to prompt the user, please guess lower. There it is. And if the user guesses correct or guesses right, so let's do, we can simply do this. Um, I can say if user equal equal rand. So two equal sign when you say if it is the right number that the user guessed, then I'm going to say in here reply is equal to congratulations or good job. I'm just going to say good job in here. All right, and at the end, so outside the if statements, you want to be parallel to the reply string or the reply variable because we want to return that back. All right, so after it checks whether they are they guessed higher, lower, or the right number, we want to return the string, whatever value it has, which will be defined depending on the conditions, it will return that back whenever we call that function. And you will see how we call that function in a second. If you scroll all the way at the top, let's go ahead and generate a random number and assign that to this value number, num generated. Okay, so here's how we reach inside the class, the custom class that we just build. We want to reach and get this function generate random number so just like I did it in here where I instantiated an object out of the random class this is the building class and I took the name of the object and inside that I reached into a method and I passed number 10 in there so in our case uh, let's do that right in here we can say calculate so here's the name of our custom class let's name this object obj and new calculate open close parentheses semicolon and then I'm gonna say num generated so here's that value that is equal to obj and if I type in dot it will give me the functions inside so here is the the, uh, the custom function we, we build it is called generate random Okay, and then I'm just going to open close the parentheses and call that function that way. So what it does again, it reaches that function and it assigns a random number between one and nine, one and ten, to this variable num generated. Okay, next let's go ahead and find out what is the number generated. So I will do this. I will go to the design view and then double click on the uh, the button guess there it is so what it does it creates a function for you and here's the function for the button guess so guess btn here's a, the event handler click so when you click on it then whatever we put in this body that will that will trigger so in here I'm gonna say let's go ahead and uh, set up the created object in here as well calculate now you can create more than one object for the same class if you like. And I'm going to say the name in here. So let's find out what is the name we gave for this. Num in mind. So I'm going to copy that so I don't misspell. And I will say 
num in mind dot text. So pass this value in there, and we're gonna say num generated. So let's get the number that's generated. Now we need to convert this into a string and in order to pass that to that label. So I'm gonna say dot to string. Here's the method. So it takes the number that it generated and it passes that to string. And let's go on and test this. Let's see if that worked. So if you hit the compiler, either way, you can go to the design view, hit the compiler in here. And here it is, we got no errors. So if I click on this. Here's the number generated, so that worked. Okay, I clicked on it, and it generated number ten and uh, number eight. So next time it could generate a different number. So if I go back here, I can say, click on guess. This time it generated number one. So again, if it will be a number between one and ten. Here's number two. Okay, so that worked. So let's go back now in here. message or whatever we name that let's see prompt user so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna say prompt user dot text is equal to obj2 dot let's reach in the function validate guess now I want to pass the number guessed so on the first parameter remember this function is is receiving two parameters one is the int user it will hold whatever we pass on the first parameter and whatever we pass on the rand or the second parameter it will hold it on the rand int uh, so let's pass the number guest on the first parameter and the way we do that is we need to find out what is the name we gave for this which is user users input users input okay now dot text let's do dot text now this will pass a string to that parameter so we need to convert this back to a number because the the parameter rand or the user I'm talking about this parameter in here it's actually it's expecting a a full integer instead of a string remember when you say dot text it's going to pass a string and this is the user's input so what what I need to do is I need to put this into an int dot parse So what this does, this will convert that string into a number, so then we don't get an error. Okay, and the number generated, it's already a number, so we don't have to convert that into a number. So I can copy that. So the second parameter is going to ask for the random number. There it is, and that's it. So pretty much what we did, we said prompt user dot text so this label in here will receive after you call the validate guess which will take it will call that function it will pass the user's input and the number that the computer generated it will come down here and then check if it's less than if it's greater than if it's correct then it will give me back strings remember this is a data type string so this will return back a string which will be assigned to this label so let's go ahead and test that. There it is. So let's say I want to choose number four. So number four, please guess lower. So that worked. So if I say again number one, it will say please guess higher because number two is the right value. So if I say number two, good job. Okay, now we didn't get one out of three. It stated one out of three. We need to increment that. Okay we also need to get rid of these so we don't see them unless you you reach three out of three so let's do that next okay so to do that let's go ahead and every time you hit the this is this will trigger every time you hit the guest button so every time you do that let's say we want to call this function that's going to say update tries which we have not built that yet so we need to go outside here and let's make this a private variable I mean private function 
Remember, private function cannot reach it from another class. Uh, this will be only used within this class. So private, and yeah, let's name it update tries. I'm going to simply copy that. And we don't want to return anything, so I can restrict that to say void. Because this function is not returning anything. This function is just updating the tries. So let's see. We're going to say if. Take a look. If num try, which is this one right here. If num try is less than three, uh, I think we said five in here, but we can compare it to the total try. So if num try is less than total tries, which is five, then Take num try and increment by one. So keep adding. Now remember this will trigger every time you hit the guess button if it is less than the total tries. And let's go ahead and assign those values to, to the label in here. So I'm gonna say num tries. Get that. And say dot text is equal to I'm gonna say num try. I need to convert this back to a string. So to string. I need to concatenate. This is how you concatenate the forward slash. So that shows in the middle. And then I need to again concatenate the total tries. So I, I'm gonna get this. There's the total tries. And I'm gonna say that is uh, convert that back to a string. And semicolon. Okay, so if the number of tries is less than total tries, then do all of this. Otherwise, so if it's not less, meaning that if you reached uh, the total tries, then we want to display the game over and the try again button. So we have not made them disappear yet, so we need to dis make those disappear first and then display them. But let's go ahead and test and see if the total tries will actually increment and stop at 3 or at 5 as a matter of fact and if I go ahead and compile this now we need to make a few changes so if I guess one number I'm going to say 3 hit guess now note, notice that it will go from 1 out of 3 to 2 out of 5 so we need to initialize that to be 1 out of 5 as well and if I keep guessing 3 out of 5 5 out of 5 and it will not go further so that worked okay so now we need to go back here and say let's go ahead and initialize these so I'm gonna copy these two line or this line in here I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna say matter of fact we can copy the function and call that function right in here so this is within the constructor it will call that function update tries so what that does again it sets this value to be one out of five instead of one out of three okay now by default we have hard coded one out of three in here if you can see that now you can put whatever you like in there it will replace that to one out of five at this point since we have one for the numerator five for the denominator so here's two out of five it automatically increment that so the reason it did that is because we're saying whenever we call that in here update tries we're saying go ahead and if it is what was it uh, right here if it's less than keep incrementing okay but we don't want to increment the first time so I guess we can just copy that and either copy and paste this in here or start this at zero which I think it will make more sense if we just set up those values this way instead of calling update tries in here so if I go ahead and test this one more time compile that there's one out of five so if I come back here and I change this to six or let's do eight we want to give them eight tries so I can keep uh, guessing all the way to eight out of eight and then it will not go any further So eight out of eight and that's it okay so let me actually say one out of three in here I'm only going to give them three tries. So if I test this one more time, just so I know it works, I guess number four. 
in 3 out of 3 if I start incrementing. Okay, great. So our next step is to actually get rid of those. So get rid of game over and try again. So simply what I can do, uh, let's actually give a name for that because we want to turn them on and off. Turn their visibility to false and true. So I'm going to say game over for that and try again again button we already have that so let's scroll all the way at the bottom under properties and we can say visible false same thing for this visible false now you want to do that for this as well visible false but I'm gonna leave that true for now just for so we can test as we go but finally when you are done with the game you can actually put that to false so people don't see that otherwise they will they will guess right at the at the spot so okay so after you do visible false this will actually disappear so let's just uh, quickly test that there it is so we don't get even though we see that on the on the design view we don't have that after we compile uh, our document so here it is okay so now we want to turn them on whenever this reaches so if I type in number when it reaches three out of three we want this to tur turn on so people can reset the uh, the tries in here they can also reset the label in here so I come back here and let's find out what is the name for that it is game over so if I come back here and where we have the else statement I'm gonna say game over dot start typing visible and I'm gonna say is equal to true same thing for the other one I'm gonna select try again copy that and if I come back here I can say dot visible equal true okay so let's go ahead and test this now and I can come here and hit compile and let's go and type a number and here, here it is they came back to true now when I hit try again I want to reset this and also reset that and this label in here so let's do that next now the way you can do that is by double clicking in here it will create the handler click for the again BTN so in here I'm gonna say let's call a function that we're gonna build and let's name that reset I'm gonna name it we oops reset game let's do that and we're missing curly brackets so make sure you have an opening closing and let's go ahead and build that function right below now you want to be within the same class so you don't want to be outside that curly bracket and here's another private function this function is not going to return anything so I can strict this to be void so pretty much what we want to do is we want to turn those back off so turn them back to false right and also turn this one false okay we want to take these two lines and reset the number of tries back to one and this will assign that to, into the label so that's great so all we have to do is just reset that and then we also want to take the text input which is this one right here users input and I'm gonna say make sure that one is blank here it is so this will set that to blank and I can say focus on that so let's say if I hit drop down and here's focus so pretty much the cursor will be in there and I want to actually copy this and paste that in here as well so anytime I hit this after it does all of this I want it to focus back to the user's input okay so again the cursor will be on the text input in there so people can start typing and not go with the mouse click on it and then start typing so 
All right, what else? Uh, we can reset the label. So let's find out where the label is. Here we go. Prompt user. We can say, what was it? Reset game. Uh, let's do that right below here. And we can say, we can whatever we said in here, do you feel lucky today? So I can simply type that in here. Do you feel lucky? Let's do lower case lucky today. And let's see what we got so far. So I'm going to go ahead and compile. And here it is. So if I type in three, it says please guess higher. Now I need, I'm going to type in on purpose five. It should say guess lower. Okay. And I'm already at three out of three. So the next one will give me this. Now we can restrict that to actually be when you reach three out of three it will give you the game over so I'm gonna say number seven and here's game over so when I click this it will reset that it should clear this and then say do you feel lucky today let's do that and yes it did so it cleared that it reset that and it says do you feel lucky today now we have three tries in here so if I scroll up let's take a look uh, let's observe what's going on uh, is it incrementing by one so here's one out of three two out of three and three out of three I guess when you go to four so the fourth one doesn't let you it says game over so what we can do we can make this uh, right here I can say negative one in here if you want to strike that to be whenever it reaches three out of three and if you want to start at zero you can do that so in here I can start this at zero out of three see what it does zero out of three and I'm gonna do four guess higher five or, and that will that looks actually a little better but we need this to be three out of three when it reaches that so what we can do is come here and say that that already reached this so I can simply say that one is equal to the number of tries and assign that value in here so else meaning that it reached that but then go ahead and assign it so we can see three out of three and then turn those back on and then when we hit try again it will reset those so we don't have to worry about that so four guess higher five six so here's three out of three game over you cannot go further try again it will reset so that will be it actually so all the rest of the restrictions I'll leave that up to you so I hit seven great job three out of three and here is a simple very simple game a guessing game you can add more restrictions like I said make it more visually pleasing if you'd like let's do a quick uh, recap of what we did we have our default class which is guessing game and within that class we went and set up those private integers, private variables, which again the private variable can be reached only within this class. Okay, and here's the constructor for this class, guessing game. Remember the constructor has the, the, the function with the same name as the class is the constructor. And in there we are initializing total tries to three, num of tries zero. Here's the, the function that it called by default, initialize component. And we have our custom class which we named it calculate and we are instantiating or creating an object out of that class and the reason we're doing that is because we want to reach inside the methods and the properties of that class right now we're reaching inside a method of that class called generate random so if I scroll all the way at the bottom I have the, the name of the class public class and here's the constructor there's nothing on it here's a public method or a public function and that's the one we are reaching at and what this function does it uh, generates a random number between 1 and 10 
So let's take that out. And it returns that back to us whenever we are calling it. So we're calling it right here, and we are assigning that random number to this variable called num generated. Now, in this line here, we are saying number of tries. This is the name of the label that we have up right corner, this one right here. So num tries is equal to what? The number of tries, which is zero, and we are converting that to a string in order to assign that to a label, otherwise we'll get an error. And then we are concatenating uh, the forward slash symbol, that one in the middle. And also we have the denominator saying total tries, which is three. And whenever we change this, we have seen that it will change the denominator. And this is back to string, so it will be assigned to number of tries. Okay, so let's not worry about the guessing game load. We have in here private uh, private void guest game click. This is the event when we uh, click or when we hit the guest BTN. This is the name of our button here, guest BTN. So what we want to do, we want to prompt the user whether they guessed higher or lower and we have taken all the logic outside here and we put that logic on a function in our custom class. So this is the function of our uh, uh, inside our custom class which is validate guess and in order to reach there again we are instantiating an object saying reach at that that function pass whatever the user typed in the for, uh, on the text input and also whatever the computer had in mind for the number so when you pass that to that function if I scroll down here here is the logic where it says if you guess the lower number then I prompt you with a message saying guess higher. If you guess the higher number, I prompt you with a message guess lower. Or if you guess the right number, then good job and so on and so forth. So this exercise, I hope you enjoyed it. It, it was more of how to build a custom class, how to pass, reach into a function inside a custom class, how to pass a parameter to that function, and vice versa and so on. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.